welcome this week, Rebecca Martinez and Amanda Santama. How long have you know you guys been doing research? How long has it been around? What's the sort of site model? Just tell us a little bit more about the, the setup there. Arizona Arthritis and Rheumatology Associates has been around for about 30 years. We have research at, at about eight, soon to be nine locations. When you total up all of our individual contract research contracts, we have about 180 right now. We are the largest rheumatology clinic and research clinic uh, for rheumatology in the U.S. Were you guys, you know, e-reg from the start? Is it something you had to sort of transition into? What, what was your uh, sort of process or what did that look like for you guys? We had a, a shared drive that we would house the documents electronically. Uh, but then it was kind of duplicated efforts because then we were still printing those documents and, you know, putting them in the regulatory binder so that, you know, they were available for the monitors that came on site for those reg reviews. And I don't think that's an uncommon, you know, part of the transition for sites, right? I've gone through the same things. Um, but I don't know, in my experience, I find that, you know, the multiple CTMS systems I've tried that have it embedded just really don't, they're not really built for it, I think. Um it's there. So you're tempted to use it. But like you guys, you kind of end up with like a couple studies on there before you're like, okay, this isn't really working that well. Uh, mm -hmm. But you know, so you kind of end up going back to paper and there's really nothing worse than being spread across for you guys, three, you know, different sort of ways of handling your E-Reg. Did you guys go look at and sort of vet a few different systems or is you know did you guys kind of know off the bat which way you wanted to go yeah we were definitely wanting to find a solution because um we had run into the issue of you know now we want to do electronic signatures and allow for remote monitoring and none of those other system or the ways we were doing things allowed for uh, definitely electronic signatures or part 11. Um, so that's when we we're like okay now we need to really figure out what we're going to do here and, and pay for something um, so we started with using what we were currently doing plus Part 11 DocuSign. Um, so that was our first uh, Band-Aid to the solution. So we went with Part 11 DocuSign and um, then housed the documents on our server and exported them when the monitor came. Um, then DocuSign came back and increased their pricing and took away the validation that we were getting for free. Um, so now we're like, okay, now we need to figure out another solution that's more cost effective and maybe specifically geared towards everything, which is housing the documents and the electronic signatures. So we vetted a few of the other vendors out there that came with a cost. Um, also the e-regulatory solution that's that's part of our existing CTMS solution or CTMS software. We really wanted to use that one um, just because, like you said, there's efficiencies of having it all in one place. But again, their cost was high and it didn't have, you know, full capabilities that we were looking for. Our regulatory specialist actually received an email from um, the Viva Systems and she attended one of their um, uh, demonstrations and let us know, hey, this is a really great uh, system. And the best part is, is it's free. <laughs> So when we heard that, uh, you know, definitely ears perked up. What do you mean free? How could it be free? <laughs> but uh, then we, you know, then I got in contact with them. They assured me that there was no charge to the site. We made the commitment that we were going to switch everything over to using the Viva, Viva Site Vault. To that end, is there something specifically else about Viva aside from cost that seemed to jump out as being... You know, worthwhile. With that dream of having all the sponsors and sites using the same platforms, there you definitely want to go with whichever system is being the most widely accepted and used in the industry with the features that um, the Site Vault had and the fact that there was no cost. We knew that, and the fact that the sponsors were already using it, we knew that it was going to be the biggest um, e reg platform out there. So we definitely wanted to jump on board with that. For me, that was the tipping point. And I didn't really realize the breadth uh, that Viva had in the market until not long after that. I mean, they are involved in, in use on the back end for a lot of these sponsors. So having something monitors already know that's already well-trusted goes a long way. Because there's a lot of little companies popping up everywhere now, and that's fine. But where are they going to be? <laughs> where are they going to be in five years mm -hmm. with uh, you know, the... Uh, you know, financial environment, or are they ever going to be adopted on the sponsor or CRO side? Anytime I do get a chance 
to talk to anybody at a at a sponsor or a CRO, I always say, you know, what would be great is if you guys did the site connect. Um, so I definitely try to to push it as well. I'm hoping that one day everybody will kind of migrate towards that. Well, and I do think, look, this is an opportunity for sites to maybe make an impression on the industry. It's something for us to stand up and say, use this. And it's a benefit for everybody. Uh, I mean, what was the actual process of implementing, implementing uh, Viva like for you guys? Getting the buy-in from the staff was the most important part for the success. Um, and then once we got our you know, research staff on board with it, we just said, okay, as of this date, uh, you know, which was next month, we just kind of ripped the bandaid off and said, we're going to use, we're going to use a uh, site vault for our regulatory documents and all new studies going forward. And so now we've just recently implemented as of January, all existing studies that were pre Viva. So we are now 100% um, on Viva. And it yeah, has been a very quick, yeah, quick process. Have you always centralized your regulatory or did you have to, you know, restructure the way that your regulatory department worked uh, in order to best implement uh, something like Viva? Well, I mean, it certainly made everything easier once we did this. So changes for the better happened. We used to have like a filing bin on site with all the studies they have and they'd have to like print out all their documents, which, you know, obviously printing is a cost for the site and then file it in the binder. And now we have everybody just forward their emails that have the electronic documents in them to a central email. And um, our regulatory specialist just goes through there and electronically files them. Um, sitting from home. <laughs> so it's great. And it allows her, you know, to work from home. And it also allows it to go a lot faster with less cost. She can file all like a document for all of those studies at the same time with one click of a button, um, which, you know, obviously just gives back so much time in her day doing things this way. Have your monitors taken all this? Are they happy? Some people, some monitors embrace it. You know, they're excited. I don't have to send you an, a binder. I don't have to, you know, go to the copy store and make a bazillion copies. And a lot of people, especially with the use of the digital delegation log um, that we've been using with Viva, a lot of them are just needing to be educated on um, what's compliant and what's acceptable. But I think ultimately, ultimately, it's nice too that like, look, it can, this is a site's decision to make, right? I mean, these are their documents that they're tasked with with managing. We don't ask them anymore. You know, we right, just present right. them with our SOPs, you know, that we've created to back up that we are using this system um, and then throw some guidance documents to them. Um, but yeah, we we haven't gone back. I think that's important for sites to hear that. I mean, just like you said, we don't have to ask permission, right? Like if you have an SOP and you're, you know, we're in compliance, we're doing everything correctly and we're not breaking any rules. This is how it's done. Uh, again, I think that's something that, you know, more sites need to hear. Thank you for just sort of having this conversation publicly. I think more sites hear about it. More sites get comfortable adopting these things. And then pretty soon it's the norm, right? No more rooms full of binders and, uh, you know, paper cuts and, uh, you know, binders <laughs> so full that when you open them, they spill out everywhere. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy those days are slowly getting to be behind us. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah.